Welcome back to another Sunday video here, and we've got some kind of surprising new research on training frequency and hypertrophy. So, basically what they did was they had two separate groups of trained males, and they defined trained as at least a year of training three days per week. And I tried to find like their 10 rep maxes or the rep max just to get an idea of where their strength was at and how trained they might actually be, but I couldn't find it. So that's what they defined as trained lifters. And basically what they did was they had equated volume, so same volume, but they had one group do a lower upper off, lower upper off, off, and the other group did a three times per week full body. And they compared three days a week frequency versus two with volume equated. All right. And they had 90 seconds between sets and their set volumes was about 12 sets for their upper body, direct sets, direct sets for their arms, triceps, chest, and back. And then for their lower body, it the way I would have counted the sets would be 36 sets for the quads per week and really no direct sets for the glutes and hamstrings. And I'm guessing they probably did this for like practical reasons of Maybe they just didn't have access to other equipment and stuff like that. But it does look like they did about 36 sets for the quads per week, which sounds like a crap ton to me. So with that, what did they find? So they did it for 10 weeks and basically they saw similar hypertrophy across the board. And they may have even seen a greater increase in hypertrophy for the group that actually had twice per week frequency. And this kind of surprised, surprised me a little bit because when you think about things kind of mechanistically, you might think, okay, if muscle protein synthesis lasts for 24 to 40, 48 hours, it might be a decent idea to train a muscle group every other day and train a muscle group like maybe three times a week. And I still think that that sounds reasonable. And this one study doesn't mean that that's not the case. However, I I do think that it might be a little bit too simplistic to think about things in terms of, hey, if, if muscle protein synthesis lasts for X amount of time, then that means we need to train X amount of days per week or after each day so we are maximizing muscle protein synthesis. And with some of this research we're seeing on kind of delayed muscle growth and that sort of thing, it seems to be, to me anyways, that there's probably some other things going on here than just the muscle protein synthesis response alone. And there might be some signaling and kind of stuff like that that we're seeing as well. And maybe thinking about things in terms of just elevations in muscle protein synthesis might be not telling the full story here. And, you know, from a programming perspective, I think that actually gives us more flexibility in terms of, hey, if we get our weekly volume in, we're probably going to be all right, and we're probably not going to see huge differences. Now, when looking at these results, I, I wondered, I was thinking through, you know, why, why might this be the case? Why may have they seen some of the stuff they saw? And initially, I was like, hey, maybe the group that trained their muscle twice a week had greater single session volume, so they might have saw a little bit more swelling, and that might have skewed the results towards the group that saw this swelling. However, in their kind of methodology section, they noted that they waited 40, 42, or 48 to 72 hours before they did their measurements again. So, and they did that for the purpose to let swelling go down. So, you know, I think that that kind of refutes what I was thinking there. And Another surprising fact of this study was that I wouldn't have expected similar growth of the quads. Just because when you do 18 sets per session in the two times per week frequency group, I would have expected that to be kind of above the, the single session kind of volume limits that might be effective in a single muscle group. 
But that's not what we saw here. And wh why might that be? Well, I just think that this might pay credence. I don't know if that's the right word to use there, but it may make it important to remember that, hey, we have to consider all the other training variables and not just one in isolation. So we got to consider our relative intensity. And I believe they took all these sets to failure and our frequency and volume together. So maybe when you have higher single session volumes, you can get away with it a little bit more with lower frequencies. However, we also have that study from not too long ago that had like, they trained like once a week and they saw almost better hypertrophy or similar hypertrophy in the group that trained with five to 10 sets in those single sessions once a week compared to 15 or 20. So that kind of goes back to, hey, there probably is this single session volume limit. So as with almost all research, we have some conflicting kind of evidence here. So what is kind of the, the practical takeaways here? Well, I think that one of the biggest takeaways here is that when in doubt, if weekly volume is similar and you're training a muscle a couple of times a week, you're probably going to see pretty similar results, at least in the short term. Now, does that mean that over the course of 10 years of training that you might not see a little bit better results by doing something else? Maybe, maybe you would. However, that, that goes back to the question of, hey, over the course of 10 years, you, you might be close to your genetic potential or pushing towards that ceiling. Like, I would like to think that we're never going to hit an actual ceiling and can keep making progress. Maybe that's just a little optimistic of me. But you could argue that, hey, regardless of what you do, if your weekly volume is similar over the course of 10 years, you might be in a similar spot. And I don't think that things are going to be that different. Now, one could also flip to the other side of the argument that, hey, maybe the more advanced you get, the only way that you're actually going to reach your potential is if you do some of these things that might make a little bit more sense mechanistically, like training a muscle group a little bit more frequently to spike muscle protein synthesis or doing little things here and there to try to maximize things. Maybe that's the only way you're actually going to see progress. And I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Because one could also flip that on its head and say, well, maybe stressing about those little things is going to result in less progress than taking a more simplistic approach and maybe you'd see better progress that way. So as with everything, it depends on the individual and there's no like one black and white answer to this. And I just think that what we can say from this study is that, hey, it's probably another tick in the direction that, hey, if you're training a muscle a couple times a week and your volume is similar, hypertrophy is probably going to be similar. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and I will see you back here next week, next Sunday for another video.